Good morning and welcome. Today I want to have a look at a short text that's for tomorrow's Mass, and that's Herod deciding that he wanted to see Jesus because he'd heard about the miracles that he was doing. And I think it's fair enough to assume that he didn't particularly want to hear his message. He didn't particularly want to know him. He just wanted to see him out of curiosity and no doubt to be entertained. In fact, it's a bit like the one of the quotes in Superstar. Herod wanted to see Jesus walk across his swimming pool. Now, likewise, I read a reflection by a mate of mine, Jose Antonio Pagola, who was reflecting on what Jesus has to contribute. And it put me thinking, yeah, what do I think Jesus has to contribute to our world, to us and to me? And I suppose the first thing is Jesus invites us to an intimate relationship, a personal, intimate relationship with the risen Lord Jesus of Nazareth. He says this because also in, I think it's in the Last Supper discourse in John's Gospel, he says that we might be one just as the Father and I are one. And he's He's very caring and very um, open to this intimacy, this knowing one another well. In fact, he says that my joy might be in you. Which is something very close. It's like that my joy might be in you, all of you. Or likewise, I give you my peace. It's my peace that I give you. This intimacy, nearness that Jesus constantly offers. And I think basically what Jesus is offering is a new way of life for all of us. A new way of life that we call the kingdom. Or as I said a couple of weeks ago, I don't like particularly the name, the word kingdom. I much prefer the reign of God or the plan of God, or the will of God, or the life of God, or the love of God. I think they can capture what we sort of stereotypically call the kingdom, because that's what the, the, the gospel uh, writers uh, mention, especially Luke. And so when he invites us to that, he invites us to a new way of living, a new way of being. Forgive one another as I have given, forgiven you. And that's pretty new in, that, in his time. And I'm very sad to say it's very new in our own time. The number of times I hear on the news, God bless them, revenge. They'll pay for that. They'll regret having done that. There's always this tone of revenge, as if that's a winning in fact, it's losing because it perpetuates the violence that we're reacting against. Peter asked Jesus, how often should I forgive? Is it up to seven times? And Jesus says, Pete, it's 70 times seven. In other words, always forgive. And the other one is justice. You remember the beautiful parable we had uh, a couple of weeks ago, where the owner of the vineyard paid all the workers in the vineyard the same, starting from those who worked you for just one hour and to those who had worked for 12. Because he wasn't looking at the work or the hours worked, but he was looking at their families, their homes, and their own dignity to be able to take back a full day's wages to support the family. Real justice. And the other one, Jesus says, if you're tired and overburdened, 
Come to me and I'll give you rest. And how often do we see people in hospitals today? People in ambulances today? People in shops today? Exhausted. Overworked. And they have to come back the next day and do the same. Jesus offers a new way of living, a new way of being. And yet, in today's world, so many of us are fascinated, intrigued by what Jesus has done. We might even listen to his words and say, that's good. But we're terrified of coming too close. We are frightened of coming near to Jesus because it might restrict our freedom. It might put limits on us and it might introduce new laws. And we are frightened of that. We fear that if we get too close, we won't be able to pull out or get away. And yet I look at Jesus after the multiplication of the loaves and his discourse on the Eucharist, when for many of his disciples it was too much to take. So they stopped going with him. And did Jesus throw out a lasso and bring them back and make sure they stayed? No. He let them go because he had invited them. He didn't impose. And then the rich young man who comes to Jesus and Jesus looks at him lovingly and makes the big offer. Look, free yourself from all your possessions and come follow me. And the young man went away. Jesus didn't protest, didn't put him down. So what I'm trying to say today is that we can be so like Herod. We can be curious about Jesus and maybe want to be entertained by some of the the things that the church goes on with, but we're not going to get too close, are we? Because we are afraid that there could be new laws and there could be restrictions. And we think our freedom, we can develop and hold and enjoy our freedom on our own. Jesus offers us so much and so much is missed what a shame for you, for me, and for our world. Okay, God bless you. Have a good week. And don't forget our YouTube. Subscribe to that, won't you? And we'll see you next week again. Bye-bye.